is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. How you doing, my man? I'm doing great. How are you? Very good. How was your vacation? Fabulous. What'd you do? Enjoyed enjoyed every bit of it. What did we do? Well, I uh, knocked off a few things off a bucket list first in my lifetime. Zip lining, swimming with dolphins, swimming in caves, uh, riding first class on a ferry. I didn't even know that existed, actually. That was very cool. What, what the hell is first class on a ferry? It's a very, very large ferry that got us from Playa, Playa del Carmen to Cozumel, and it's three levels. It's a really big ferry, big boat, and there's a section that's enclosed, uh, and literally it's, for, it's first class. You pay a little bit extra, and you're like in the air conditioning. Oh, there you go. Yeah, okay. Very nice seats as opposed to the, those... Hard ass seats. Yeah. 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 No, it's very cool, actually. I didn't even know they existed. So I was like, yeah, I worked. Okay. All right. yeah. I had no idea they had like first class in a, in a ferry. Did not know that either. Yeah. Wow. How, lo how long of a trip is it in that ferry? The one to Cozumel is about uh, 20 minutes, that neighborhood. Okay. Isn't terribly All right. long. All right. So. Twice as long as one in the one in Disney World. Right? Because that's about 10, 15 minutes or something like that. I don't think I've ever taken a ferry in Disney World. You never have? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, I haven't taken that ferry in years. It's over 20 years the last time easily I went on that ferry. Maybe more. I don't know. But it's been a while. Obviously, I always take the monorail to go into the, uh, the Magic Kingdom. But the ferry is... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I'm spacing out. That that ferry. Yes, yes. I've taken that ferry one. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Spacing All right. out. Sorry. I figure you're you're an old fart. I figure you you know you've taken the ferry in your early days. You know because that's when you do in the later days. I, I I bet you haven't taken the ferry the last few times you've been to Disney. No, I pretty much prefer the ferry. And and when we take the monorail, oh, it's basically because I get outvoted by by my wife and two kids because I would always go for the ferry. Oh, okay. So they go monorail. A lot of times they prefer going monorail. Of course, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I rarely did the damn ferry anymore. Uh, that is, uh, although I used to, what we used to love to do is rent the boats, the little speed boats. Okay. And then what you do is you'd go behind the ferry in the wake and and jump those waves. Oh, there you go. Nice. That's what you. That's what you do. That that's the trick right there. Now you got to watch out because then there's the Disney Coast Guard. And then they're getting all bent out of shape that you're, you're, you're trying to do some stuff that you're not supposed to do and all that kind of stuff back in the day. There you go. Like, see, yep. you got to learn how to get in trouble in, in Disney world. You ever been in trouble in Disney world? Uh, not that I can recall off the top of my head. No, no, but I tend to be a rule follower. I'm, I, I'm like very, very square that way. Okay. All right. You never went to the, the, the Disney jail behind the scenes that I've been told about. No, no. Oh, on that little island that they have? I don't know. I don't know where it's at, but supposedly they've got like behind the scene jails. Like when people get out of control, they they like take you like they'll take you right behind like some whatever, some some kind of a, a thing that you think is normal. And it's just like a doorway that leads back into some some area where they they put your ass away or something until the cops come to pick you up. Yeah, they turn you into a donkey. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of it because they do it in the uh, what is it? What's it called? Grad night. Okay. It happens to some of the some of the kids that get out of control. They, yeah, they you disappear like they they like I don't know where they go. Somebody will maybe somebody on the chat board. You know, I bet you we have over two hundred people right now on the chat board. Somebody's been in trouble in Disney mm -hmm. out of those two hundred people. Question yeah. is, will anybody admit it? Oh, they will. That this our listeners are our listeners are honest, bro. They, they talk about it. plus. The, the guy that's admitting it, you know, it happened to him 40 years ago. So he doesn't care at this point. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's, true. that's probably what it what it's all about. All right. Um, I see that, you know, this is desperation time this off during this part of the offseason. So they'll make anything a story. It's not really a big story of the Gesicki thing, not having a contract, right? I, I almost kind of feel like he was going to go through this season without a contract almost. Like I, I can almost see him getting the contract – three quarters of the way into the season after they see that he can, he fits what they're doing and all that kind of stuff. 
because that's what I think people are missing out on the people that are talking about this is they're not supposed to sign him to a long-term deal until you actually find out if he fits your scheme. Correct. No, I mean, it's a story in the sense that the deadline is coming up Friday. So it's news if it happens. Once the deadline arrives, it's news whether they did it or didn't do it because now his status is going to be cloudy until next off season if they don't sign him to an extension, which again, to me would be shocking if they did. Um, yeah. But in it, yeah, but like, as you said, it made no sense because the big question is the second Mike McDaniels hired as head coach is how does Mike Gesicki fit to that offense? They right. haven't found out that answer in, since the, uh, the off season program. Sorry. I mean, right. they can say all they want about, yeah, he's applying himself and really taking on the challenge of becoming a better blocker because that's what you would expect him to do. But that doesn't mean he's going to be proficient at it. And the other factor, again, is to me is where does Hunter Long fit into all of this? Because, again, you spent the Your point. third round pick on the guy in 2021. To me, that high of a draft pick for a tight end, ideally you did it with the idea he's going to become a starter at some point. Um, right. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and And I'm sure you also drafted him or maybe Flo drafted him because he felt he could block. And so that's – which, by the way, he does have a reputation of supposedly being – also a blocker too, besides a pass catcher, okay. which is not what Gesicki is known for. That's why when I saw that story, it was like, this is a non-story. It doesn't make any sense. Signing him would be actually shocking news because as much as I like Gesicki and I want him to stay here, I think most of us that follow his team, we think he's a good player, but you have to understand, we still don't know if he fits this new scheme. And that's the that's the part that you have to give the people in the front office and the coaching staff to benefit of the doubt. Now they have to now figure things out first to see if this new look dolphins fits what Mike can do. Well, two quick points here is, is number one, the original report came from Mike Garofalo and then NFL.com did it as part of a package on the eight guys who were given the franchise tag in the off season right, for right. whom got an extension. So it wasn't like they, they, they made a big headline out of it. Those of us who cover the dolphins obviously pulled it out and specifically focus on Gesicki. That's number one. Number two, if we look at Gesicki objectively, he belongs in a scheme that's a wide-open passing game where he's almost yes. a pseudo-wide receiver, not, yes. not in a run-oriented scheme that's going to have a fullback to begin with. So, The truth that. is the truth, bro. Correct. I mean, in other words, he probably fits the Arizona Cardinals more than he fits what they're doing here. All right, without question. So it's like you have a great talent, but you don't need his kind of talent as much in this scheme as other teams. He's got a lot more value for to other teams than he does for the Dolphins. Yeah. No, you're right about that. You're right about that. It's it's just a matter of, of seeing if he can make that transition to what they need. And that's why I say, and the, you know, and here's the flip side to all of this, which again, kudos to the front office. They have plenty of money now that if they do want to extend anybody halfway three quarters of the of the year in that they have somebody up or somebody close to it they do have the flexibility of doing that so they've done a nice job of of giving of of keeping some space available for those kind of things because that's a real as you know that's a really real advantage for a team because if you do have a couple guys next year and you only have one tag or something like that if you can lock up somebody now, then that alleviates some of that pressure in the offseason for some of the things you have to do to tag a certain guy or not. No, and without question. And the other thing about Gesicki that, to me, is problematic is last year, yeah, he had a lot of catches, career high in catches and in yards. If my numbers are not incorrect, I think he had two touchdown catches for, for a tight end. I mean, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to see more red zone production from the guy personally. Well, I'm mean, it- – Again, let me defend. And, and that's part. It's part of a whole package. It's not just him, but ideally, that's what you get out of your tight end. Yeah, but but to defend him on this, it wasn't his fault that he was on the sidelines a lot. That was you know the way things were being run last year. They didn't use him as much as they should. They didn't use him the way they should at times. So some of that I can blame on him. His lack of production. I think he could have been more productive if they would have schemed him in a little bit more. And I, I thought they didn't last year at times. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to see what the I'll be honest. My perception is that he was on the field. There were, there were times that Smythe and him had the same snaps 
or Smythe had a couple more snaps. Correct. Yeah. That's not well. They love Smythe because he because of his blocking ability, and and then I get it. It's almost if Smythe's off the field and Gasicki's on the field, you're telling the the opposition it's a passing play coming up, whereas Smythe gives you more of the the mystery aspect of it. But yeah, no, there 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 are different factors involved. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I don't blame it all on him on the lack of production because I think it's something that that they could have schemed him in there for. Uh, anything else uh, injury wise? Uh, everything uh, on on uh, target for uh, for Mostert? Anything else you you know about? No, and there's I mean there's really no way of knowing. I mean, we, they're, they're reporting in a couple of weeks. Uh, we'll have a better idea. Uh, I'd be surprised if Mostert didn't start training camp on PUP. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Byron Jones started training camp on PUP, uh, considering head off season surgery. Uh, Teron Armstead's a question mark as whether he's going to open on PUP, but my guess with him, uh, I have less of a concern where if he does start on PUP, it could be a matter of, of a couple of days, which won't be a, a huge deal as long as he's fine once he gets back. Um, I think those, and Alec Ingold, probably my, my guess was we would start training camp on PUP. He's a guy I'd like to get in there sooner rather than later because he's going to play a big part in this offense, you know, as a new fullback, something the Dolphins haven't had in a couple of years. Agree. A hundred percent. I definitely would want to get. Now, the good thing is he's an experienced fullback. Right. So that part, at least, it's not like we're bringing in a rookie fullback and then you're like saying, oh, man, can we get the guy ready? And what does he know the system and the scheme and yada, yada, all that crap? This guy will adjust quickly because he's a smart guy. He's been in the league for a while now. So that's the good thing. And he's physically mm -hmm. already prepared for this league and all that other stuff. So the transition will be a little less for him, at least. Yeah, no question. And and, and again, to me, we, of all, in all the talk about the Dolphins' running game and how it could be improved, he's to me he's the next factor in all of this. Because if you look at San Francisco's success, uh, Juszczyk as their fullback, who's in the Pro Bowl every year, played a not insignificant role. So they need in goal to to be that kind of guy for them. I'm with you there. All right, uh, what are you working on? Uh, at Sports Illustrated, so folks can check you out, my friends. Yeah, I mean, we picked it back up. Right, I picked it back up. I should say right away when I got back. I got back Friday night, and I was back to four stories yesterday and and Saturday, and that's the pace I'm looking to maintain. And then once training camp starts, I'll be even more than that. Uh, today, I got the final part of a mailbag where I asked for questions thanks to the uh, the magic of telecommunications worldwide, where I, I solicited Twitter questions. Got a ton of them, enough of them that I needed to split up into three parts. Part three is today. Um, got a story. Can, or continuing our series of the opponent breakdowns today is the today is the Baltimore right now the Buffalo Bills, which is week three. Uh, the countdown with the jersey numbers today was number fifty nine. Had to go way back for the top player to wear fifty nine for the Dolphins. And I'm going to have something today. Was, was, was Brzezinski 59? He was. He was He was not the top guy on my list. He was in the top three. He was not the but, top guy on my list. Well, he didn't make the top three? No, he did make the top three, but he was oh, not. Okay. He was not okay. Oh, okay. Oh, wait. Who's number one? Um, God. I, ha I haven't looked, so I can't. I, I didn't cheat. Wow. Hmm. All right, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell you to say it because I want people to go check it out. And oh, wow, I can't believe I'm I'm forgetting who who it must be because it must be so freaking obvious, right? I I don't know if I'd say that. No, I wouldn't say. Oh that. no, it's not. Well, okay, so then I don't feel so bad. Unless you're old and you are, and I am. So for us, it sh maybe should be obvious. But oh God, now you're hitting me hard with the old thing. Okay, don't re don't reveal it. I'll give you the initials, and then you'll 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 give me ah. Now I get D S are the initials. Oh. Got it? Yeah, of course oh. I got it. I'm okay. I'm an idiot. Yes. Okay. What a moron I am! God, okay. how can don't I not get that? Don't be so hard on yourself. Jesus, that's just plain stupidity on my part, bro. Huh? We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. God. All right. Well, check it out so you okay, can. Well, I got up every day because he does it every damn day, and it's actually a really cool list. It's a fun list to follow. Okay, so 
And if I may, one more thing is I have a tour related story and, and tour and year three uh, that I encourage everybody to check out. Okay. There you go. Check it out and follow him on Twitter at Poopart NFL and subscribe to alldolphins.com. Check it out. Bookmark the page, baby. He is Alan Poopart. Alan, as always, thank you, my brother. Appreciate you. You got it. We'll speak on Thursday. You got it. There you go. The great Alan Poopart. Good stuff as always. There it is. Your sports grill. Miami Dolphins report. This is the big O Show. This is the big O Show.